hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sheila in today's video we are going to be working this sweater vest that i came up with a month ago and it works up really fast i could say i can make this same exact vest in about three hours and um, the stitch that we are going to use is the mini bin stitch it has wide armholes and um this sweater vest is made of the main body and then the ribbing part which is on the base of the sweater and then the armholes and then the neckline and it's a v-neck shape so let's get into the video so for this tutorial you will need a five millimeter crochet hook for your ribbing you also need a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook for the main body of your um, sweater vest and then you'll need a pair of scissors and uh, the measurement that we are going to consider is the hip measurement so measure your hip size like around your hip area and find that measurement or the widest part of your upper body because sometimes the hips are a bit smaller than the bust area so if you have your bust bigger than your hips, then that's the measurement that you should consider for this tutorial. So let's jump into the video. So the first thing that you're going to get is your yarn and your hook. This is my 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and my yarn. And you're going to start off with a slip knot and you're going to make a chain that's half your hip measurement. So for me that was 61 chains, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have my 61 chains and the next thing that I'm going to do is to go into the third chain from my hook. So 1, 2 and into the third you're going to insert your hook, pull up a loop, you have two loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop and you have four loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through all and this is called the mini bin stitch so you're going to chain up one skip the next chain and go into the next with one mini bin stitch so insert your hook pull up a loop you have two loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook in that same exact chain pull up a loop and then yarn over pull through all the four and you're going to repeat this all the way across so chain one skip the next chain and then place a mini bin stitch in the next chain chain one skip the next so i'm going to go all the way across doing this and then i'll meet you at the end of my row So I'm coming to the end of my row and I have two chains left. So I've chained my one and I'm going to skip over this and then I'll go into the very last stitch with my mini bin stitch. And this is how row one looks like. So we are going to row two and you're going to chain up one, turn your work and you're going to go into this space that's attached to the mini bin stitch this we are not working anything in the chain one space we are going into this space and you're going to place a mini bin stitch there chain one go into the next mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch chain one and continue to do that all the way across So don't forget to always chain one in between the mini bin stitches.
So I've gone all the way across placing one mini bean stitch in each and every mini bean stitch below. So my very first show had a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Thirty mini bin stitches. So that means also row two should have a total of thirty mini bin stitches. This is for a size medium, which is um, forty inches hip measurement, because that's what I'm considering. Because that's my hip measurement. So forty inches. This is what you should do. And then um, we are going to row three, and row three is going to just be the same exact as row two. You're going to chain one, turn, and go into the very first mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch, chain one. And we are going to continue doing this for a total of 10 rows. Because uh, if you want a length like mine, then do a total of 10. If you want it a bit longer, you may consider about 12 or 15, but don't go... Uh, higher than 15 15 would be so long so I'm going to go ahead and do a total of 10 rows that look exactly like row 2 so I'll meet you back when we are starting row 11 So after your 10 rows, you should be having something like this. And now we are going to row 11. And for row 11, you'll chain up one, just like we've been doing for all the other rows, and turn your work. And this time, we are going to start doing the decrease rows. And for the decrease rows, you skip the very first mini bin stitch and go into the second and place your mini bin stitch there. Chain one, one mini bin stitch in the next. Chain one, one mini bin stitch into the next mini bin stitch. So your mini bin stitches will start to decrease by one after each and every row. So this is row 11. I'm going to go all the way across, placing one mini bin stitch until the very last mini bin stitch. And don't forget, the very last stitch only gets one mini bin stitch. We are not decreasing on both sides, only at the beginning. We've come to the end of row 11 and I've placed only one mini bin stitch in the very last mini bin stitch. And now we're going to repeat row 11 for a total of 10 rows. So we're going to do 10 decrease rows. And that means I'm going to meet you back when you have a total of 20 rows because we have these 10. And then we are going to do 10 rows of decreases. So let me show you again. You chain up one, turn your work. This is row 12. And you're not going to go into the very first mini bin stitch. We're going to skip over it and go into the second mini bin stitch and place one mini bin stitch chain one and then continue to place one mini bin stitch in each mini bin stitch while chaining one in between the stitches so um this is row 12 and i'm going to continue to do the decrease rows until i have a total of 20 rows and then i'll be back to show you what it will create um, it will start slanting inwards So let me go ahead and do my 10 rows and then come back to show you what to do at row 21 All right, so I'm back with my 20 rows and um, this is what I was talking about the decreases at the beginning of every row is, is going to um, the decreases are going to create a slanting effect on both sides. So I hope you remember to only decrease 
at the beginning of the row and not at the end. So after row 20, you're going to chain up one and turn your work. And from row 21, we are going to stop decreasing. So that means we go into the very first mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch and then go all the way across into each and every mini bin stitch. But don't forget to always chain one every after a stitch. So row 20 is the very last decrease row and now we're just doing plain rows of mini bin stitches and keeping the stitches constant until we get the length of the um, sweater vest that we want. So for me I did a total of 47. That's what I'm considering because it's what I did for my previous project. So. Um, this is row 21. I'm going to continue to do plain rows of mini bin stitches. You can see it has started moving upwards, straight upwards. So um, I'm going to go ahead and work until I have a total of 47 rows, right from the very first row up to the end. So let me get off and work my rows until I have 47 rows. If you want your vest longer, you can consider a total of 50 rows. So I'm through with my 47 rows and this is what I have. This is our back panel. And uh, we don't need to do the shaping for the neck at the back. So it's as plain as this. I just went ahead to do plain rows of mini bead stitches all the way to uh, row 47. So yeah so let's begin on the front panel so the front panel is going to be the same exact as the back you're going to go back and recreate this same exact piece until row 30. so that means we go through this phase of 10 rows of no decreases then 10 rows of decreases and then after row 20 you will do 10 rows of no decreases up to around here and then I'll meet you back at this point so that we start shaping the v-neck and then finish up the sweater the general shape of the sweater so go ahead and do a total of 30 rows of your piece exactly how you worked the back panel but up to row 30 and i'll meet you back when you're there so i have my 30 rows for my front panel and now we're going to start shaping the v-neck while working the length of the sweater vest because this is the front panel so let's begin all right so before you begin row 31 you're going to count the number of mini bin stitches across row 30 so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 so it doesn't matter what number you have you're just going to split it into two if you have an odd number then um you may want to consider skipping the very middle one then you walk up to like the second last one to the middle so since i have 20 mini bin stitches i'm going to chain up one and this time i'm going to work a total of 10 mini bin stitches because 20 divided by 2 is 10 so i'm going to go into the very first one with a mini bin stitch chain one this is the second third So I have my, my 10 mini bin stitches and I'm at the middle section of my sweater vest. So we're going to start decreasing on the inside part of the vest, but keeping it flat on the outside. So we're going to row 32. 
chain one and turn you're going to skip over this and go into the next mini bin stitch chain one so I hope you still remember how to reduce how to decrease because we did this at row 11 to 20 you just skip the very first mini bin stitch and you don't go into it and you just jump into the second one so we are only going to be reducing on the even rows because that's when we are going to be starting our rows on the inside of the vest hope that makes sense so row 32 row 34 row 36 row 38 and so on are going to be decrease rows because they start from the inside of the vest so chain one and turn so this is an odd row that means we don't decrease we just go into each and every mini bin stitch so our row 32 ended with main nine mini bin stitches and row 33 will have the same number of mini bin stitches which is nine and then row 34 i'll be showing you how to do it row 34 is going to be the same exact as row 32 so so far we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine and i told you that even rows are decreased rows because they start from the inside so you can see we're starting from the inside going outwards that means it's a decrease row and we're going to skip the very first one and jump into the second one with a mini bin stitch chain one and go all the way across so row 34 is going to have a total of eight mini bin stitches <coughs> so i'm demonstrating for a size medium so whatever number you're going to follow the same exact instructions whatever size you made for you're going to follow the same exact instructions chain one and turn this is row 35 and the odd rows don't have decreases that means we just go across into each and every mini bin stitch so 35 is going to have um, a total of eight mini bin stitches so all i'm going to do is to uh, do the decreases until i have a total of five mini bin stitches all together so i'll let you know <coughs> how many decrease rows i did so that you do the same number of decrease rows so this is row 36 And then this is row 37, which doesn't have any decreases. And then <coughs> row 38 has decreases because it's starting from the inside of the vest. And row 38 has six mini bin stitches and I told you I'm going to do until I have a total of five mini bin stitches so I'm going to row 39 which won't have any decreases So 39 also has six mini bin stitches 
and now we are going to row 40 which is an even row that means we are going to decrease so skip over the very first one and row 40 is going to have a total of five mini bin stitches And that means uh, we've done a total of 10 rows uh, all together in order to get to five mini bin stitches. So I think uh, this would be very short for the larger sizes. And if you have more mini bin stitches, you're going to keep decreasing until you have a total of five mini bin stitches all together across here so once you get your five mini bin stitches you're going to uh, continue working five across until you get the same number of uh, rows that you did for your back panel so remember i told you i did a total of 47 rows for my back panel if you did a total of 50 go ahead and work your five mini bin stitches across until you have a total of 50 rows if you did more than that then uh, do the required number of rows to get to the same number of rows as your back panel so for me it was 47 that means i'm going to add a total of seven rows of five mini bin stitches across so that I balance the height of the front panel with that of the back panel. Alright, so I have my seven rows of plain um, five mini bin stitches across. And now I want to introduce my back panel and I show you what I meant by that. So this is going to be the front panel and it's going to sit on top of the back panel like this. Like that. So this is what we have. We have two panels. But the front has a split of the v-neck. So we are going to do the same exact thing on this side so let me attach my yarn and walk you through that so when you get the length that you need you're going to chain up one and cut your yarn I'm going to leave a kind of long strand because we need to attach these pieces together so that's enough and now you're going to turn your work to this side we are going to start on row 31 on the opposite side so attach your yarn in the very first mini bin stitch and chain one and then place one mini bin stitch in the very first stitch chain one go into the second chain one the third chain one and remember row 31 on this side had a total of 10 mini bin stitches and we want to balance the same exact thing on this side so these are four five six seven eight nine And 10 so I've chained one and I'm now going to turn my work and this is row 32 which is an even row and you know what to do for even rows uh, we re we decrease so skip over this one and go into the second one with a mini bin stitch and then continue all the way across So um, 
we are going to repeat the same exact thing that we did on the opposite side so if you don't know where to go from here you're going to rewind your video to row 32 of this side and then you do the same exact thing and balance what's on this side onto this side so I'm going to go ahead and work my 47 rows total on this side and then I'll meet you back when we are going to do the the ribbing of the vest and also the joining and everything so go ahead and do 47 rows on this side to uh, balance what's on this side all right so i've balanced both sides and this is what you should be having right now and now you're going to introduce your back panel choose the right side or the wrong side of your work your work should be on the wrong side just lay it over the front panel like this doesn't matter which side is up let me just turn it so um i think both sides are going to look the same so you don't have to worry about anything so you're going to get your tapestry needle and now we are going to be attaching the upper parts which are going to rest on our shoulders so i'm going to go into the very first mini bin stitch and then count five mini bin stitches in one two three four five and it's this one on the back panel and then i'm going to get the chain one space sorry and then go into the next mini bin stitch so we are just attaching stitch to stitch chain one space mini bin stitch chain one space and continue to do that You can also use your crochet hook if you don't have a tapestry needle. So uh, we have this joined and I'm just going to go into a few stitches to secure my thread here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So get this yarn that you left behind. And since this yarn is on the inside, we are going to count five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Go into the very last one here. And go into the fifth mini bin stitch. And do the same, the same thing as you did on the opposite side. Okay, now I'm going to weave in the ends. I think I have a strand here, so I'm going to just make a knot here. Okay. And after this, I'm going to just cut this off. I no longer need this. And I'll do the same here. So, um this is how your work looks like the shoulder portion has been formed and now we are going to go down and attach the sides here the very first 10 rows 
on both sides so grab some yarn and put it through your tapestry needle okay these are my 10 rows my first 10 rows on both sides so I'm going to go into this side and then I go into the very first row on this side and then go into the second row on this side and then the second row on this side third row third row on this side fourth and fourth on this side fifth one two three four five this is the fifth one two three four two four five the fifth on this side then the sixth on this side and the sixth on this side seventh seventh eighth eighth ninth and ninth on this side and then the tenth on this side and the tenth on this side sorry it had to be this one so we are done with joining our ten rows and after this you so you're going to just weave in your strand and after this you're going to cut your yarn and you're going to do the same exact thing on this side so you can see we've joined the first 10 rows and now you're going to do the same on this side so i'm going to just lay it flat and join the first 10 rows so So we finished joining this side and we are going to weave in our working yarn. Make sure you go into several stitches so that uh, you secure your yarn and you don't have to worry about anything. You can go into multiple stitches, it won't show. And after this, you're going to cut your yarn. So at this point, the general shape of the sweater vest has been achieved. Uh, this is how the bottom looks like. These are the armholes. You can see they're very low. And then this is the neck hole. So um, the next thing that you're going to do is to do the ribbing which we are going to jump into um, shortly. So uh, you're going to count the number of mini bean stitches all the way around the base. So we had a total of 30 on this side and 30 on the other side. I hope you remember that. This is for mine. So go ahead and count the number of mini bean stitches you have all around the base. So for me, I have a total of 60 mini bean stitches all the way around. That means I also have a total of 60 chain one spaces all the way around the base of my sweater vest. So let's start on the ribbing. We're going to first work the ribbing of the base and then we shall come to the ribbing of the neckline and also the armholes. Okay, so I had a total of 120... Uh, mini bean stitches as well as the chains so i have 30 mini bean stitches here and 30 here which makes it 60 and then 30 chain one spaces here and 30 chain one spaces on the other panel so which makes it 
120 so that's the number of rows that I'm going to do for my um, ribbing so for the ribbing you're going to start off with a chain of 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and you're going to do go into the second chain from the hook with one single crochet and single crochet all the way across for a total of 10 single crochets So I have my 10 single crochets and now we're going to row two of the ribbing. You're going to chain up one and turn your work and you're going to go into the back loop only with one single crochet. So you're going to grab that back loop and you're going to have a total of 10 single crochets back loop only. All the way across. And we are going to keep repeating this chain one and then single crochet back loop only until we have a total of the number of stitches that we had for our bottom um, part of the sweater vest so if you had 120 stitches all the way across then you should be having a total of 120 rows of ribbing so i'm going to continue doing this this will create a ribbing effect so I went ahead to keep working the back loop only single crochet and now I'm on my very last row which is row 120 it's actually 119 so that means I still have to do one more row. So I'm currently running out of yarn and I'm just using whatever I have to um, work with that. And demonstrate how to come up with a final piece so I'm done with my 120 rows and you're going to chain up one and leave a very long strand to use for your uh, tapestry needle to attach this ribbing to the actual sweater vest So put your yarn through the tapestry needle like that and then the next thing that you're going to do is to join this part you're going to make sure you don't have a twist and you're going to join this together stitch to stitch to form a ring some sort of ring So we've attached our ribbing and now we have a circular form. So we're going to use this same exact strand to join this ribbing to the actual sweater vest. So as I told you, I'm running out of yarn. You're going to attach your very first row to any stitch. Let me say here. And you're going to attach that then the next row will go into the chain one space 
and then the next row will go into the uh, mini bean stitch here then the next row will go into the chain one space and you're going to keep repeating this all the way across all the way around the bottom of our ribbing so make sure you place in the stitch and then in the chain one space and go all the way around this is what it's going to create and um, you're going to go around the base of your vest doing this until you come to the beginning of your row. Okay, so this is my very last strand of this color and at least I've demonstrated how to attach this. You're going to keep attaching until the whole ribbing is settling onto the body of the vest. So I'm bringing in this yellow vest to show the whole feel of the actual vest this is when i attached the ribbing onto the base of my um of my vest and now for this you will do the same exact thing only that uh you'll chain up five instead of 11 you'll chain up five and then go into the second chain from the hook and do a total of four single crochets and start working back loop only until you have the total number of rows that you have all the way around your armhole and then you attach the same exact way that we attached the base ribbing of the sweater and then you'll do the same for this upper part these are the number of rows then up here you will count the number of stitches plus the number of chain one spaces and then um, you will do a ribbing of still four stitches the same thickness as the armhole and then you'll join it and then join using your tapestry needle all the way around your neckline i'm sorry i couldn't do this because i've run out of yarn and I can't do it using a different yarn. I'll have to wait for my supplier to send me some more yarn. But I hope I've been clear on this and uh, I hope you've gotten it clearly. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Let me know um, through maybe email or comment down below and I'll be able to sort you out in case you're um, having challenges working this uh, armhole ribbing or the neck ribbing so that's it for this video i hope you liked it make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and i'll see you in my next video bye